Here I got is a console uh, zigzag walking foot. And this is the original thread that it came out. It hasn't never been ran, so I'm gonna set it up. And, uh, and I'm gonna put this bobbin case in. So the bobbin case is going in. Like this, it's a P form. So you're gonna go in, you're gonna go through the slot and going in through here. And then you're gonna come down in here and come out there. So on a zigzag, you'll see that this is a lot wider. Uh, sometimes people wanna put in a, the bobbin, regular bobbin case from like a, a 206. 206 doesn't have this. And it's, and it's a little bit slanted towards the back. Or they'll try to get uh, uh, up from a brother's that which is a straight like this. So you don't want, you don't want that. You want this one, which is the wide. So when are you gonna go to zigzag? So I'm gonna pop in this bobbin case. I hold it like that with, between my two fingers like that. And then once I get it, this is left over from the old, old thread that I cut that the factory installed. Just want to remove this first. This is the factory sample that came with the machine. And you can see that what it's set up. So now we're gonna do our sample to make sure everything is running before we have the customer receive his machine. This is this is their thread. So I'm just gonna pull it up. The bottom thread, you can see it pulls up nice. So I'm gonna go back and uh, I'm gonna start with some, uh, I'm gonna try it with some uh, regular leather or like a synthetic leather. Actually pretty nice form leather they didn't we're going to do like a French seam but we're just going to do one side to start off first and uh, then what I do is I, I move it by hand to make sure that everything is smooth that was too much on the edge so I'm going to move it more towards the middle Always good to do it by hand first in case something is caught up in there. You'll know and you won't jam up the machine. Once I got it started, I'm going to pull it a little bit and I'm going to go. And I can feel that the foot. needs a little adjustment it's not thick enough so we're gonna try it with two layers meanwhile since that was theirs now I'm gonna pull through the rest I got a, a polyester bonded nylon here that I pulled through black thread This time I'm gonna try it with a double layer. And you can, I can feel it already that it is gripping a little bit better. It's a 
double walking foot. So you have a uh, two feet and you have the top and bottom foot. And you can see with two layers is, is running good. So what you do is you, you can check it here if the presser foots are tight and that you won't have any slippage of material. Right here, you got it almost at the largest stitch. So if you wanted to go to a, uh, a smaller stitch, I can bring it down here. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit here to number four. Give it a couple of times. When the needle's going up, I'm gonna go. And then you got a smaller stitch there. That's a nice stitch. If you're doing sales, that's a perfect stitch. Now, if you're doing putting on labels, you can make the, the stitch smaller here to give you a, a little tighter stitch length. When you have it at a small stitch, depending on the material, you're going to have to pull the material. And then you always check your, your bottom, and you can see it's pretty good. You're always going to see a little bit of black because uh, it's pulling. It's like an embroidery. A lot of times in embroidery, when you're doing embroidery, you're going to see 75% and 25%. This is probably about 95%, which is not bad. You're not going to see the bottom stitch. So then we can go, we put it on zero. We're going to be able to, um, get a straight stitch. So obviously in a straight stitch, I'm going to move my stitch lane. I'm going to start it off at four and then I'm going to go again. Which it changed really good without no adjustment of my tension or anything. I had got a good stitch. I'm going to put it on five. you're going to get that stitch. So obviously it's a good machine because you don't have to be playing around with too many of the settings. This is this machine is the first time it's it's sewed other than in it has been sewn at the factory. It's always good to the to, to run your machine a lot at a slow speed. When it's new, because metal to metal, you're going to uh, you won't you'll get a nice evenly wear, and when your machine is broken in, you won't have any issues. So I'm going to put it back to the the biggest stitch. Drop my stitch length to about two. Give it a couple of my hands. When the needle's going up, hold it, pull. And we got that beautiful stitch. This time now I'm going to switch the material. This is like a fabric, good upholstery. So if, we, if we're sewing something, doubling it up. Well, I'll just double it up like this, not waste more material. 
put them here. Same thing, I can go here. I can start with a back tack. There, attacked it. Being very careful because this is a, a thinner material that I don't jam the machine and, and you blame it that the machine's not good. So, very slow because that way I get used to the, the dragging. And you see I'm getting a, a nice dish, which and this is what the if you were gonna be doing some canvas, this is a good way of practicing it. So once you do it a couple of times, you can always clip your, your threads. Then you don't have to hold it. I like my work neat. So. Nice and smooth. You can hear this machine. These machines uh, come with a, a console hook, a Japanese hook, Japanese bobbin case. Sometimes people go to a generic part and the machine's not working and they're they're unhappy. But if you use a good part, you won't have any issues with the machines. I know people that got this same machine for 35 years and they're still going strong. So that's your zigzag. Now if I go a little smaller here, which sometimes people want to do a like a like a a lettering or something like that, you gotta be very careful because you can get the thread stuck. See that's very small there. So I'm gonna go little by little. I'm practicing here, seeing what the capacity. going to be I mean anytime you get a new machine the best thing to do is try it on different materials try it different stitch lengths because you don't want to be on a project and then have to stop your project ruin it and then having to learn why did that machine do that so that's pretty much thinner. You can probably get something a little closer, but very rare. So then if I go to zero, zero, look, never, never switch it with the needle down. Always switch this because the needle does move to different positions. So here we're going to go with the materials and do it on a straight stitch. I'm always feeling, making sure that nothing is jamming. And then I'm gonna go. So we got a nice stitch again. And then you can see if you have your oiling points and and uh, you have some oiling points down here that you want to keep the machine clean and 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 uh, lubricate it. You got your hook uh, casing here, so. Then you got your knee lifter. You have to set that up right. And then just oil in little different spots there. And that's it, there's nothing to do. And you can see the console name here, imprint it so you know it's an original. There's a lot of copies out there that are bad copies. You take a chance, you take a chance. 
So this is it, simple thing. Anything else, you can always adjust your your heights of your presser foots here by lowering it or raising it. It'll give you the height difference. So if you're using higher different materials, you loosen this up and you can adjust it up or down depending on the height of your, your foot pedal. Anything here, you don't have to touch. This is your presser foot strength. A lot of times I'll test it with my hand. If I can lift it by hand, I'm, I got it good. So if I can want it tighter, I can do it. And then I also test it here. So that's, that's it. Here you got the bobbin winder. I already started to do a bobbin and there's nothing to it. Simple, simple machine. So this is a uh, console 146 RB. This one is a one step zigzag. If you got the 2A, it's a two step zigzag. If you got the two, 3A, it's a three step zigzag. The difference you gotta do to, for them is to change the cams inside. But you can always buy it two steps or three steps. All right, that's it. You're all squared off. Thank you.